can do a test. Okay, a quick test, hello. I hope you guys can hear us now. Sorry about that little false start there. Um, gave me a time to warm up, so it's all good. Welcome to you and on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, we just hope that you're having a great morning already and you're ready to worship the Lord with us. Um, there's a few of us here today and we're sticking to restrictions, but um, yeah, we just love to fellowship. And so where you can fellowship in a safe way, please do it. It is a good thing. It's good to um, come together with others in the faith and just um, encourage each other. So just a couple of short announcements. Tithes and offerings are still happening and you can do that online. There are the details on the screen and on Facebook and on the church website. So please check it out and just give as um, you feel led to give. And I'd like to remind you again, well, those here again, that Wednesday armchair chats are still happening at 7 p.m. It's a short word from... Uh, different people each week and I think did it just happen this week yes Steve just shared this last week on um, blasphemy and it was a really cool little word and if you haven't watched it yet go back and do so it's still there and it's on YouTube also um, and next week we're having Joan Joan Bandicoot who is sharing with us this coming Wednesday so I can't wait to hear that and yeah, and I'd just like to remind you to keep up the fellowship where you can in safe ways. Um, invite people around. You can have up to five people in your home um, doing the safe distancing, of course. And it is a great t way to just keep up the fellowship within your church and the congregation here. So, bless you all. And we're just going to get into a time of worship. Please join us. Please stand. Um, lift your hands, just worship him. We're going to raise a hallelujah. We're going to lift up the name of our Lord God because he is good. All right. <laughs> Yes. I raise a hallelujah. 
Lord, we welcome you here today. Father, we just honour you for who you are. God, we thank you for all that you do and for what you do in our lives. God, you are amazing. You are mighty and you are worthy of all the praise that we have to bring you. Father, everything, we want everything to be about you. We want all of our focus to be on you. And Father, we surrender every part of our lives. We lay it down at your feet now, Jesus, that you would have your way in our lives. Jesus, 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 have your way. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
worship him because he is the Lord our God. Oh, and we love to sing his praises. We love to sing him praises. We love to lift the name of Jesus. Because he is wonderful. He is powerful. He is beautiful. He is the Lord our God. There's always a reason to praise Him. There's always a reason to lift the name of Jesus. No other name is as powerful or wonderful or beautiful. It is Jesus, he is Jesus, the King, our God, the Lord on high, he is Jesus, he is Jesus, Jesus. can't get enough of Jesus. We worship him because he reigns. He rules and reigns above everything, over everything. He rules and reigns. We choose to worship him. We choose to bring honor to his name because he deserves it all. Jesus, Jesus, you deserve it all.
I just want to invite you. If you don't know Jesus, He knows you. And He's just waiting for you to invite Him in. He doesn't want to force His way. He doesn't want to force His way into your life. He's given you a choice to choose Him because He is your God. He has made you and He loves you. Oh, He loves you so much. There is no one like Jesus. There is no one who saves. There is no one who you can have a relationship with God through except Jesus. Come to Him today. He's inviting you. Just use this time to just say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you. That's all you have to say. God, I invite you into my life. I ask you to just help me to let go of my past and live in my new life in you, Jesus. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And God, you you sent your son Jesus to die for me. Jesus, come into our lives. If you've prayed that prayer today, asking Jesus to forgive you and to come into your life, Why don't you just write to the page, make a comment. I received Jesus. We'd love to talk with you to let you know more about it. Because there's so much to know. (laughs) Jesus is so good. He's so good. He just loves you so much. We build our lives on Him. He is our firm foundation. There's nothing else. There's nothing in this world like Jesus. There's only one Jesus. Let's sing that again. I will build. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation and I will put my trust just waiting there to pray with you.
exalted, be exalted, Jesus, be exalted in my praise, all honor and glory be so good. Jesus is the King of Kings. If you've responded to him today, please let us know. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to talk with you more about that. But right now, we're just going to come around um, communion, the table of the Lord. And I'd like to invite John Tibble to come and share a short word with us today. Bless you. Why don't you get your communion elements ready while you're at home there? A biscuit, a bit of juice, um, it doesn't have to be much. It can be lemonade and lollipops <laughs> if you'd like. But either way, we are actually remembering who our Jesus is. <laughs> Amen. Well, good morning again. What a wonderful start to our Sunday service. We are really blessed here at Moe New Life Christian Centre with an incredible bunch of musos. And uh, quietly and privately in your own homes this morning, just give thanks for the worship and the praise that these wonderful people bring to our Lord Jesus Christ on a Sunday morning. Isn't it great to have our hearts set and focused on the Almighty? Well, welcome to you all uh, as we celebrate uh, this Holy Communion online. Uh, different for me, I've not done this before, so uh, here we go. Uh, as was introduced, my name is John, and it's my privilege to talk to you this morning. We are all at different points in our lives as we cope with COVID-19 and the many issues of self-distancing, self-isolation, and being out of face-to-face -to -face contact with our families, friends, and our respective local communities. When we partake of Holy Communion, we do so in remembrance of the incredible sacrifice that our Lord Jesus Christ took on for all of us. We are all familiar with the night before his crucifixion, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, praying and talking to God about the upcoming events. Scripture tells us that Jesus called out to God, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And that is in Scripture, Mark chapter 14 verse 36 in the NIV translation. The Lord's Supper is a soul-stirring experience because of the depth of meaning it contains. It was during the age-old celebrations of the Passover on the eve of his death that Jesus instituted a significant new fellowship meal that we observe to this day. It is an integral part of our Christian worship. It causes us to remember our Lord's death and resurrection and to look for his glorious return in the future. 
The Passover was the most sacred feast of the Jewish religious year. It commemorated the final plague on Egypt when the firstborn of the Egyptians died and the Israelites were spared because of the blood of a lamb that was sprinkled over their door posts. The lamb was then roasted and eaten with unleavened bread. God's command was that throughout the generations to come, this feast would be celebrated, as related in Exodus chapter 12. During the Last Supper, a Passover celebration, Jesus took a loaf of bread and gave thanks to God. As he broke it and gave it to his disciples, he said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And that again is quoted in Scripture, Luke chapter 22, verses 19 to 21. He concluded the feast by singing a hymn, which is portrayed in Matthew 26, verse 30. And they went out into the night, into the Mount of Olives. It was there that Jesus was betrayed, as predicted by Judas. The following day, he was crucified. Another statement Paul made that is not included in the Gospel accounts is, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And that is picked up in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. This places a time limit on the ceremony until our Lord's return. From these brief accounts, we learn how Jesus used two of the frailest of documents of elements as symbols of his body and the blood and initiated them to be a monument to his death. It was not a monument of carved marble or molded brass, but of bread and wine. So now, please join with me as we eat the bread as a statement of unison, as we are all one with another in the body of Christ. And I encourage you to do this at home now. And we now drink the wine, again as a token of the blood shed on our behalf by our Lord Jesus Christ. Whether you have wine, grape juice, lemonade, or water, it doesn't matter. The symbolism is still as important. And just to conclude... For many people, perhaps even some of you watching this morning, COVID-19 can be, sometimes is, a lonely time of isolation, of being away from the ones that we care about the most. Please be assured that with our Christian faith and the full knowledge and belief in what Jesus did for us on the cross, you are not alone. You are not alone isolated, you are not forgotten. With Jesus in your heart, you will always have a peace, a friend, a comfort. Should you wish to talk to any of the leaders of this church about the act of communion or becoming a Christian or just to talk to someone during this challenging time, then please do not let this day pass without calling us and start your journey out of isolation and into a life-changing relationship with Jesus.
God bless you. Amen. All right, wow. Thank you, John. That was a lovely communion service. Thank you for that. <clears throat> yeah, we never need to be alone or isolated when we know we've got the fellowship of the Lord Jesus Christ. I like what Graham Cook says. It's the three plus me. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit and me. How could I ever be alone? <laughs> you know, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. You know... <laughs> Um, the other day I was about to do some work on my computer and uh, I set it up, get ready to go and the message comes across my screen, uh, do not turn off your computer, update in progress. <laughs> you know? And there are times when that little message brings out not the best side of me because I think, oh, but I've got to get on with the job, I've got to do things. And it's saying, but, you know, don't turn off your computer or this update's not going to happen. You know what? I think maybe um, I was ready for a personal update. Maybe we're ready for an update. Maybe you're ready for an update. And uh, maybe the Lord's just saying to you, stop switching off the computer. Let the update happen because it's, it's going to update you right down deep. Get all the little workings functioning properly. Get all the settings right. And get you ready for the upgrade of what God is going to be doing. And so today I want to ask you, are you ready for the update? All right? It's been a challenging, challenging season. So much uncertainty. So many changes. It's like our normal life has somehow been kind of kidnapped. That's how I felt. Like my life had been kidnapped. And, and had been put on hold. I'd been somehow put on the back burner and told, just sit there and wait and you'll be told what to do and where to go and how to do it and you've just got to wait for instructions. And that's how I was feeling like for a little while. You know, in all of this though, there's one certainty. God is still God. God is still faithful. God is still who he says he is. And in God, do you know what? We're going to find the rest, the comfort, the wisdom, the strength and the encouragement that we need. This is a time for actually embracing the moment. I think a lot of us are wishing the whole thing away and, and I know on a level we, we do. We just want to get on with life. But let's not miss what God is doing at this time. I've addressed this before, but I just think the Holy Spirit's still bringing us back to this place where he wants us to Embrace the moment. Embrace the process. Don't be in a hurry. Allow him to do what he is doing. We don't have a lot of control about what's happening out there in the world, what's happening out there. But you know what? At this time, we can lean into God. We can take courage from the fact that God is always there. He's always been there. He's seen us through many trials and troubles. And he's not going to leave us now. We can testify to the fact that he has led us through. He's, he's brought us through before. He's brought us through trials. He's brought us through tribulations. He's brought us through tough times. And we can testify that he has done that. And he's not going to change now because it's the same yesterday, today and forever. So he's still there and he's still doing what he does so well. He's still keeping his promises and he'll never leave us or forsake us. And we need to remember that he's here with us now and he's here with us in this process. He's here with us while we're waiting for the reboot. And, and he's working on our inner workings through this time. So don't turn off your computer. Sit with God. Wait and let's go through this process. So God never wants to just deal with the superficial he always wants to go deeper. He wants to get into the systems, into the hard drive. 
So let's talk a little bit about that today. I was uh, listening to a fellow called Richard Green. He's an Australian pastor and author and speaker. But he spoke about creating in our lives um, a rhythm of meeting with God and making a place that's, that's just where you go to sit down, it might be a chair, might be a place under a tree, might be a walk down by the beach, but a place where that's a place where you know you're just going to meet with God. And he talks about creating um, a new pace. We can't meet with God while we're thundering through life and trying to get things done and trying to make things happen. We've got to actually slow our pace down, slow our heart down, slow our mind down, slow things down. So to create the place, create the pace, slow the pace down and in that create the sacred space. Sometimes we do just need to sit and wait while the update is in progress. But our waiting isn't a passive waiting, it's not twiddling our thumbs. It's a real time of waiting on God. It's a time to lean into God, to sit in his presence. And as we live through this season, you know, I really want to encourage us to let God get in and work on those internal things, those internal things that are happening. God is rebooting us. As we stay in his presence and let him soak, let, uh, let him soak in us, abide in us, you know, as we allow that, it's kind of like a tree in winter. And it doesn't look like much is happening on the surface, but there's a lot happening down under the ground. And I looked out my kitchen window and I saw evidence of that this week as my magnolia tree has little buds coming out on it now. And I thought, you know, all the leaves had fallen off, the tree looked bare, there was nothing happening, so it seemed. But obviously those roots are still there, they're still drawing up that nourishment and those little buds are starting to appear and it gives you hope for the future, doesn't it, when you see spring starting to sprout around in places. All right, what I want to talk about today is, is a letter that, well, the beginning of a letter, a prayer that Paul prayed for the Philippians. Now, this has been going around in my mind for some time, and I'm thinking, have I heard someone preach on it recently? Have I preached on it recently? Have I just read about it? Or has it just been something I've been sitting with? But I just want to talk about this prayer that Paul prayed for the Philippians, and it's uh, in verses 9 to 11 of chapter 1. And it says this, uh, and this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So Paul prayed specific things for the church at Philippi. He wanted them to grow in love. He didn't want them just to get stuck. Have we got that verse up there? Yeah. He didn't want them just to, to get stuck in, in kind of a, a mediocre life or just get born again and then flop along somehow. With um, I often think, you know, that's what our walk can be like sometimes when you're trying to walk up a beach with flippers on. Have you ever tried that? <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it, it's possible, but it's not easy. <laughs> you know, and sometimes we, we try and do that when we're doing things in our own strength and on our own. But, but Paul's here speaking to the church at Philippi and he prayed for them to know what is excellent, what is the best thing. He wanted them to be able to discern and approve what is best. These are the things that he talked about. He says that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the praise and glory of God. So let's have a look at these five points that Paul prays 
for the church at Philippi. And this is my prayer for you, this is my prayer for me, for us as a congregation and for all you that are listening today. That love will abound more and more in the knowledge and depth of insight. You know, the more we love God, the more we want to know about him. And the more we know of him, the more we love him. You know, the deeper we delve into God and the more we start to learn of him and who he is and his character, the more we grow in love with him. That's been my experience. I think some people, um, they might start reading the Bible and they read the word of God and all they see is this wrathful God is raining down judgment and creating situations of war and sending floods and doing things, you know. And um, if you start reading the Bible and just start reading it, that's maybe the kind of God that you would see. But when you come into the relationship with God that we often so speak of, and we, and Diana spoke of that this morning, coming to, into that relationship with God through Jesus Christ, and we see that he is not this God of wrath and judgment, but he is actually a God of love. And yes, there will be judgment. There will be things happening um, for the earth and for the world. But when we have the relationship with Jesus and we come to God our Father through that relationship, we begin to understand more and more what these things are all about. Because we're learning out of love, not just information. God is so big and so gorgeous. The other night we went, uh, we listened with the youth to Louis Giglio's um, How Great Is Our God. And he, and he talks about if the earth was a, was a golf ball and he, and he puts the universe into perspective this way, that we're so tiny and insignificant and the great universe that God's created is so immense and yet God loves us and holds us together and, and he is our father and he's our creator and he, but he's the lover of us, of our souls. And I couldn't help but just falling that bit more deeper in love with God and who he is, uh, just understanding the um, awe and immensity of what he can do and what he has done and, and yet understanding he finishes off the talk talking about laminin, which is the little um, enzyme, little part of our DNA that holds all our body together. You know, that the same God that created all the universe created me and he loves me and he cares about me. You know, and our relationship with God is like this ever-expanding universe that it just keeps growing deeper and growing wider. You know, as part of our Christian walk with God, he wants us to grow in love. Christian love um, isn't something stagnant. It's not something that you just get, you know, oh, yes, God is love, so yes, you've got to love other people. It's, it's, it, neither is it all sentimentality. It's not um, loving people because or setting our own agendas. It's not insensitive or it's not stubborn. Love isn't any of those things. God is love. He is love. And it's a mandate from him that we love him, to love God and to love other people. Love is a growing and expanding thing. Our love for God is developed as we know him, as we receive insight from his word through the Holy Spirit. And we remember... Um, that he is dwelling in us and with us all the time. And I know I just talked about creating a sacred space, a quiet place and slowing down the pace. But knowing and loving God is more than just meeting with him in one place one time or coming to church or putting on worship music, having your quiet time. Because if we just do that, we're just expecting that that, you know, if we do the right things and put the right things in order, God will show up. 
But I really believe what God is saying to us today, you know, God is with us all the time. He is dwelling in us and that sacred space is there within us as he dwells within us. And as we go for that walk along the beach or sit in that place, you know, we're not doing that to um, create some holy place place where God can come because his presence in us is already creating that holy place and so you know he wants to just speak to our hearts he wants us to develop that relationship with him he wants it to grow and expand he wants us to develop with him that knowledge and insight that grows out of our relationship with him because if we just come to church to get our God fix or have our worship time or put on some music really that's just a functional thing and we can you know we could sit and have a quiet time every morning and we could do that out of our duty we could do that because it's the right thing to do and I'm not criticizing that having a, that quiet time and that disciplined time and I'm not criticizing that but if it just becomes a ritual then it's just functional it's not relational so, you know, whether you're lighting a candle or playing music, whatever you're doing, you know, that's not going to, ha- you know, maybe that helps us feel better, but that's not going to bring the presence of God because the presence of God is always in us. You know, we can't just wait for him to show up or somewhere if we, like I said, get all our ducks in a row and do all the right things. He's with us and in us all the time and he wants us to learn to walk with him and talk with him and fellowship with him and that's the way he gives us insight and revelation that revelation comes out of relationship so often we miss his presence just because we're not listening for it just because we're not expecting it so we want to get past you know the rigid ritual and we want to get into that relational kind of consultation with God all the time so we're not just somewhere waiting for God (laughs) we're waiting on God as we walk and talk with him so we need to center ourselves to listen and to learn and God gives us wisdom and strategy and answers to our problems and answers to our situations And like I said, all of this, though, it grows out of our relationship with him. So first there's that love of God and that love of God that comes through through reading his word, through knowing about him, learning about him, that relationship grows and develops. And then our discernment grows. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Paul prays here that love will abound more and more. We want God to answer our prayers. We want him to give us direction and show us a way to go. But the first step is to just allow that relationship to deepen and grow. And you know what? The answers will come out of that. The answers, the strategies, the reasons why will come out of knowing who. They'll come out of knowing God and having that relationship with him. So... What's God dealing with along the way? I had a conversation with a little boy whose name I won't mention right now. But the other day he was at my house and visiting with me and he said, I don't believe in God. I said, why don't you believe in God? He said, well, because I prayed and asked him for a million dollars and he didn't give it to me. And I said, well, that, you know, that's interesting. What would Mr. Seven-Year-Old do with a million dollars? I wonder, you know. And so we sat and we had a talk and in the end we agreed, well, you know, if you went and asked your your dad for, for, um, you know, $100 and dad said, well, what are you going to spend your money on? And you said, I'm just going to go to the shop and buy some lollies. Dad is very likely to say, no, you can't have your $100 right now. But, you know, as we walk and talk with our dad, with our heavenly father, the insight starts to grow. It's the knowledge develops and we understand that, you know, we might have been a little kid once and stamped our feet and demanded that God do this and do that for us and you haven't answered this prayer and you haven't answered that prayer so I'm going to feel discouraged and disappointed and, and I'm, I'm just not going to talk to you anymore, <laughs> you know. And God's saying, you know, it's not just what I can give you. It's not just what I can do for you. Let's sit down and talk together. 
let's come and, and counsel together. And, and, you know, he counsels us. He walks with us. He talks with us. He teaches us. And what he's mostly interested in is developing our relationship with him. So I think we're up to about slide four now. The depth of knowledge and discernment comes out of our relationship with him. So allow the Father to just love you. Let the Holy Spirit teach you. Jesus is the word. And the more time we spend with him, the more we're going to grow in the knowledge of his written word. Because when he speaks to us and the Holy Spirit comes and teaches us, he's leading us into all truth. And so it's an ongoing development of the things that we know. Our mind is renewed as we sit in his presence. Our heart and mind begin to come into alignment with his will and come into agreement with what Jesus thinks and says and does. God delights to teach us. He delights to spend time with us. He delights in you. And God loves to draw us into that space. And as I've talked about, that space, that slowing that pace if we just slow down and walk with him and talk with him, you know, he's going to show us, he, sa- he says he's going to show us great and mighty things that we've never even thought of. But he's not going to be able to do that while we're rushing around, trying to do things ourselves. You know, he wants us to slow down our pace. He wants us to get ready for the upgrade. <laughs> Slide five. It says, so we can discern what is best. There was an old saying around here, I think Pastor Potts used to say it a lot, good, better, best, never let it rest till you're... No, Nadi used to say this, didn't she? Good, better, best, never let it rest till your good is better and your better best. You know, Paul says to grow in love so that you can discern, put to proof things that differ. We learn to discern and to make judgments about things that really matter, it says in the English version, the today's English version or something of the Bible. I forgot to write it down, but it was a different translation. But that's what it says. Um, hang on. Yeah, grow in love so that you can discern, put to proof things that differ. And we learn to discern and make a judgment about things that really matter. And so I think... As we love God, as we sit with him, as we talk with him, as we enter into that relationship with him, he really helps us to discern what's good and what's not, what we, can, what we should take up, what we should leave down. Decisions are not always so straightforward. And there are times when then, you know, they're not written down in black and white for us so we can particularly follow. I mean, the word of God is there, but sometimes it's even difficult to say, what does God really mean when he said this or that? We need sometimes extraordinary discernment to perceive how things differ when choices are to be made. Things can look really good but may not be of God. I've heard people talk about, you know, it's a good cho- is it a good choice or a God choice? You know, we've heard that saying. Sometimes it can seem to be good but is it godly? Are they the right choices for the moment? Is that the direction I should take now? I'm not talking about the absolutes that are just right and wrong. There are some things that are just right and wrong. It's wrong to kill. It's wrong to steal. Um, You know, it's wrong to lie about people or lie about things. It's wrong to do those things. There's some absolutes. But there's a lot of um, times when... There are choices to be made and it could be a, a good choice but it's not necessarily that it's a right choice, a wrong choice, okay? And there are times when we really need to seek the Lord and say, okay, Lord, actually, what do you think about this? What's your opinion on this situation? And, and they're the things we need to do is really seek God and ask him for his opinion. So, Um, You know, so we need to be seeking God and talking to God about these things. As I sort through this decision, am I making it out of um, a selfish ambition or am I being guided by love through this process? I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that I'd be guided by love to come to a good conclusion and by the word of God. It's kind of like the riverbanks of a river guiding us. We've got God's love. 
on one side and we've got the, that discernment and the knowledge of his word on the other side. And the Holy Spirit guides us through this process. So we need to be seeking the Holy Spirit for what is best in this situation. Am I seeking his opinion before I post something on Facebook? Or is it just something that seems popular on the t- at the time? Is it what everybody's saying? Or have I read something and it sounds clever, so I'll put that up? Does it just make me look smart or informed? Is it loving? Is it true? Am I being discerning? I need to ask myself all these things before I pass judgment on something or before I make a decision about something. Because there are loud voices out there saying many, many things. So I want to be discerning. I want to be loving. I want to be kind. I want to be truthful. And, you know, there's a verse that says, if you're going to say anything, if you're going to speak, speak as the oracles of God. In other words, when I say something, I'm a Christian and I am an ambassador for God. So when I speak and say something, I want to make sure it's actually lining up and in alignment with God, who he is, his character, his nature and his word. So sometimes before we wade in on an argument or have an opinion about something, let's double check. Let's go to the word of God. Let's ask the Holy Spirit. You know, does this line up with you? Is this from your heart? Is this what you're saying? Or is this just some, someone else's or my opinion? Love shapes and hones knowledge and moral insight so we might test and approve what is best. And it helps us develop a test for what is vital. So am I ready for an update here in this area of life? I want to just walk step by step with you, Holy Spirit. I don't want to get caught up with popular opinion or or all of those things. Lord, I want to develop such good insight that I can tell that's a lie. That's the truth. I'm not going to say that because it's not God. And sometimes you can say things and you think, you know, or you hear things. And I think, I know people are saying that, you know, this is what God says or the God I believe in or the God that I know says this, this or this. But sometimes I think, you know what, that doesn't sound like the God I know. (laughs) So I want to go and check it out with the word and I don't want to get caught up in those things, those voices that can be very loud in the world. But it's often that soft, small voice, that still voice of the Holy Spirit that we need to be listening to and learning to hear and recognise that voice. My sheep hear my voice. They know me and I know them and he's going to lead us quietly with his voice. The other thing is, are we living with eternity in mind? You know, this helps us to live the best life possible. The next part of that verse says that, that you know, we're, we're uh, having that relationship of love with God. He's leading us into insight and, and, you know, through knowledge and insight, we can know what's best. But then it says, uh, and we can live pure and blameless till the day of Christ or for the day of Christ, towards the day of Christ. You know, um, this life we live here on earth, it's, it should be a reflection of the kingdom of God. Uh, verse 6 in this chapter says, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will continue to perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. You know, Paul's praying for growth for a coming to maturity, not just for maintenance. He never wants us just to be in a holding pattern. And, um, you know, even when we're talking, look, I don't know a lot about computers. Maybe Philip should have been giving this sermon. I don't know because he knows more about all this stuff than I do. But you know what? An update isn't just about maintaining your computer. It's actually about getting all the functioning parts of it in good shape so that it can take an update, so it can be improved upon. Sometimes, uh, you know, our inner workings get a bit cold and lazy and dysfunctional and and we need to allow the Holy Spirit to come in and, and work on those areas. And it's not just to maintain us, though, you know, you want to maintain your car, you want it to function well, you know, but 
Jesus doesn't want us just to stay in maintenance mode. He wants us to actually grow. He wants our life to always be growing and maturing. He wants us to come to know Jesus Christ. Paul says later on in chapter 3, he says, um, he talks about to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and to know that power in our lives, to be acquainted with his suffering. You know, he, Paul talks about what, knowing how to walk through this life with the power of the Holy Spirit, no matter what we're going through. And he talks about, it's not that I've already attained that. Paul's not saying, I'm telling you this because, hey, I'm Mr. Perfect and I've got it all together, so I want you to do that. He's saying, look, I'm not saying this because I've already attained it. I'm saying it because I'm on this journey too and I'm still working towards this uh, life. Um, so as we walk with him and talk with him throughout the day, he continues to reveal himself to us in our thoughts, in our moments, in our prayers, in our uh, talking with other people. We begin to understand not just the why. This is what I said before, but this is how it happens. We don't just understand why we ought to be doing things or how we ought to be doing things. When we understand who we're walking with, when we understand Jesus and have that um, beautiful relationship going with him, then we can understand the how and the why better. So we're walking and talking with Jesus and he wants us to grow in our understanding of him and, and then love and discernment and increasing, uh, that increases the power, that resurrection power of Jesus working in us. We work together with Jesus in his resurrection power, in that kingdom thinking, that kingdom power. You know, and then as it, it's working in us to mature us and grow us and help us along our way, it's a progressive walk. And so as we're making choices, there's that delicate balance of, of love and that depth of insight and that growing in maturity. So perhaps the way we saw things once upon a time as we read a verse or read a scripture and we had an understanding of it, now I'd go back to that scripture and read it again. And I believe the Holy Spirit gives you greater depth and greater understanding and greater maturity of that. And we can apply that to our lives as we gr have grown in that element. We've grown in that part. So what choices am I talking about? You know, we, we make choices every day. We're learning every day. We're growing every day, maturing every day. Um, perhaps um, God's teaching us about our marriage, marriage in general. There's lots of things he's teaching us about, sexuality. Last week, Steve talked about s swearing and blasphemy and taking the Lord's, Lord's name in vain. You know, some of us might have grown in that area because we've let our speech run, get run away sometimes. And so we've thought, oh, is this an area I need to mature in? And I need, my language needs a little bit of updating. Our families, our moral behaviour. You know, these are areas that the Holy Spirit wants to, like I said, we, we've got a big lot of workings there. And the Holy Spirit wants to work in all of these areas of our life. So are we ready for that update? This, it's an ongoing, progressive thing to the day of Jesus Christ. Our choices made in love, guided by and shaped by knowledge and moral insight and discernment from the Holy Spirit takes us on, helps us develop, helps us learn and matures us. You know, there's um, another way of learning. Adam and Eve tried that out. They took from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You know, that's not how God wants us to learn. That's worldly knowledge. He wants us to learn from him. And so these good choices that we make in our lives, this growing and development happens as we learn to move with the Holy Spirit from a heart transformed by God's love. Are we bringing our life and health to ourselves and others by aligning 
our thoughts and our words and our behaviour with his word and letting that work in us. So I'm not talking about eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I'm talking about eating from the tree of life, from Jesus. And I'm not talking about making a whole new set of rules. God doesn't make hoops for us to jump through. Our choices are made as a result of our relationship with him and the guidance of the Holy Spirit living in us and working in us. And so there's a balance. I hear people often talk about, you know, um, you know, I can't wait to do this ministry or take on this position or do this job. But I think the Holy Spirit's talking to us at the moment very much so about that the, it's identity before ministry. It's our relationship first. It's knowing who we are. Otherwise, even our service becomes performance and it gets confused and we put too much value on what we do rather than on who and whose we are. And so we need to guard our hearts and minds. We need to remember where God is in the midst of each situation. So whether he's talking to us about our ministry or our family or our service or whatever, remember he's going to first work on who we are and on our identity before the ministry, before the position. The Holy Spirit working in us and then working through us. Let the Holy Spirit reset your mindset. That was just something the Lord spoke to me this week. Because I can get busy. I can get busy thinking about all the things that need to be done and what we've got to do and and how we're going to do church now and all the differences that have happened. But I've had to remember that first of all, you know, I am his beloved child I am his creation I'm walking and talking with him this is my identity the child of God first and then he'll out of that relationship the the doing comes the behaving comes the ministry comes this season could easily mess with our heads and our emotions and it's all the more reason to take time to spend with the Lord um I was thinking, you know, it would be easy to feel unfruitful or unproductive, like we're not really doing anything because we can't see a lot of the fruit. Um, You know, we can't say how well church is going because we've had hundreds of people attend the service. Well, we we haven't got those metrics to use and things like that. It's not our normal things um, to, to say how fruitful we have been. But it's good to know that Jesus is more interested in our faithfulness and in our relationship with him than uh, statistics or busyness. So that's something I've had to learn in this season. That's one of my updates is to just say, you know what, Lord, you've got all this in your hand, in your control, all right? And I'm just going to let our relationship grow and develop out of this we've still got to lead church we've still got to know what the future is but that'll come out of that relationship okay slide seven filled with the fruit of righteousness i'm just going to buzz through this bit do i give do i have peace and joy and righteousness out working in my life the fruit of righteousness grows out of our loving relationship with god our righteous state is how we've been made we've been made righteous by jesus christ The Holy Spirit teaching us and equipping us and helping us to discern between right and wrong. So verse 11 says, uh, to be filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. Are we living a life that is filled with righteousness? You know, it's not our own righteousness. It's the righteousness that's imputed to us by Jesus And the fruit of righteousness is what grows out of that new living relationship we have with Christ. This means that we live out of the new life we have in Jesus. Our thoughts, our conduct, our behaviour, our words. This 
comes out of that relationship with Jesus. This is the fruit that grows in our life through the Holy Spirit working in us. So how we live in the Spirit is a product of the grace of God and what he's done in us. And we grow because we have been loved by God. We have knowledge of him and his word and we're getting to know him more and more and we develop a depth of relationship that allows us to have discernment through the Holy Spirit. So you see what Paul's been praying here. It's kind of like one thing flows on from the other. And then that righteousness, the righteous living, the good living comes out of that. So that's what he wants. So he's not telling us, he's not giving us a set of rules to say, well, he did, didn't he, with the, with the commandments and that. We do have rules to live by. But he's, but he's saying it's the relationship first and then your conduct your, it will all flow out of that. Okay. We're in a time of process. Let's embrace the process. We're living, kingdom living here on earth. We're living for the day of Jesus, yes, but it's not all about that, look, you know, we just trot along here somehow and wait until we go to heaven when we die. We're living that full life in Jesus Christ, here and now, until the day of Christ. It's progressive, our lifestyle, our prayers, our thought life and our speech with a view towards that day. It's an eternal perspective. It seems we've been talking a lot about the process lately. And there is a balance between um, a place of rest and getting complacent. And we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. We don't want to get complacent. But we do need to be in a place of rest. This is maintaining an eternal perspective. Kingdom living here on earth while we're waiting for Jesus. Not just about, you know, getting to heaven when we die. But letting heaven be present with us now as we live this life. So we're in a time of process. Let's embrace the process. This season, you know, I've heard it even just this morning talking with people. They've felt... um, numb, confused, depressed, sad, frustrated, angry. These are some of the words I've heard. These are even feelings and things that I've felt over time, over these months. But I know I have been updated and I know this update is still continuing. I've been tempted to slam down that lid of the computer and say, that's enough. I've had enough of this hanging around and waiting around. Let's get back to normal. But then I can thank God for what he's doing in me. And through it all, I've grown, developed and matured through this process. And what's the end result of all of this? For the glory of God. All right, he wants us to live for his glory, filled with his glory, filled with his joy. You know, bringing everything to God, filtering our decisions through prayer, meditation on his word. It helps to guide us through and filter out the things that would bring us into burnout that would actually just um, not come to, um, to good. You know, it keeps us from time-wasting exercises. We want to give God 100%. We want to give him excellence. We want to arrive at the what is best by consulting him, but not by running ragged and running around in our own strength. This isn't about perfectionism. It's about living perfectly within perfection and I know that sounds a bit odd we can't give a hundred percent a hundred percent of the time otherwise we're going to run around and run into burnout we can't do it when we're working in our own strength even if we're doing it for the Lord There are times when we have to work hard and we know that we've got to roll our sleeves, get into things and work hard. But there are times for resting. And um, I've come to this conclusion in all of this that the best is what is needed in that moment at that time. That's the best thing. Life isn't perfect. But 
we want to do it for the glory of God. We want to see God's name glorified and edified through the things that we do. All right, And he's promised that the path of the just is like a shining light that's going to shine more and more into that perfect day. So as we're walking and talking with Jesus and in that relationship with him, and as we want to just live for the glory of God, that glory is going to reflect out through who we are, through our lives, through our speech, through our behaviour. So let's bring glory to God. Let that be our ultimate motive and goal. My question is, um, is to ask God, God, what do you think about this? What's your opinion about this? How are we going to do this together? How are we going to manage this situation? What should I say in this situation? And as I develop that relationship with him, that walking and talking, he's going to give me thoughts that I could never think of myself. He's going to give me solutions that I could never think of myself. He develops my thoughts. He increases my knowledge. He expands my thinking. He gives me revelation. But it all comes out of that relationship. It's like an apprentice working with um, the expert rather than trying to do a course online. And, and you can do a course online. I've done it. You can learn things online. You can develop some skills. But you know what? It's never quite the same as actually working alongside someone who's been there and done that and who knows what they're doing. And they're going to say, you know, you don't go that way. You go with the grain. Let's, ju let's just do this together. Let me show you how to do it. And as an apprentice, I'm walking and talking and learning from my Heavenly Father. So this must be our ultimate motive and goal, to bring praise and glory to the Father. And having said all of that, let's go back in your week this week, go back and read that prayer and pray it. Pray it over yourself. Pray it over your family. Um, that Paul the prayer that Paul prayed there to the Philippians. But I think over the next two weeks, it's school holidays, it's been a rough few months and I'm just thinking um, for myself and for others, I really believe God's saying, don't turn off your computer but sit back and let the update happen. Take a time of rest, take a time out, rest with the Lord, let him do the updates required. This requires us just to be in a place of receptive rest, not frantic activity. We're going to have some frantic activity as the year progresses. Things are, we're, we're moving forward, things are going to happen. Have some fun, play with the kids, go somewhere nice. But let's wait on the Lord, spend that time with him. It's not a chore, it's relational. Okay, slow down, create the sacred space. So Lord... We just want to give you permission to let the update begin. Lord, we just want to walk with you and talk with you. We want to give you access into, Lord, the deepest recesses, the deepest parts of our lives. Lord, speak to us about our homes. Speak to us about our time how we use it. Are we using our time wisely? Are we investing our time in kingdom things? Are we wasting a lot of time? Lord, there's a difference between sitting still and being in your presence and allowing time and space. But Lord, sometimes we fill up that time and space with stuff that's just not important. It's not even good for us. So Holy Spirit, speak to us about that, about the way we use our time, about our relationships, our family, our friends, our finances, Lord. Help us with our stewardship of our time, our finances, our gifts, our service. Holy Spirit, we want you to come into all those places in our lives. Our time we spend with you. Holy Spirit, help us not just to have those functional times of study and learning, but let our quiet times with you be beautiful places, sacred 
spaces, Lord, where we've slowed down and not just ticking boxes or going through motions, but allowing you to come and speak, to move us, to heal us, to work in us. Lord, even to strategize with us, to give us ideas, to help us grow in our knowledge, to help us be more discerning. to know what is best. So Lord, we just thank you that you are our Heavenly Father, that you just long to draw us into your presence. Help us to walk with you and talk with you every single day, Lord. for our good, Lord, but more importantly, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Sorry, I'm going to finish off there. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Hey, yes, I'll go. Joanne's going to finish off. Thank you. I got ahead of you. Well, what a great day we've had. Um, thank you for watching online. We just... Uh, pray that you've been blessed, that you've learnt something and um, I did just want to read that one more time, um, Philippians 1 verse 9 to, through to 11. I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. For what I want you to understand, oh, for I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ, for this will bring much glory and praise to God. And as Pastor Glenda has said, um, please read it over again this week and, and just pray it over yourself. <laughs> like, work it out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to work out in your lives. <laughs> and if you are one of those people that has invited Jesus into your life today, um, we just ask that you would... If you're comfortable to inbox us on the church page or leave a comment on this um, live stream and we would love to connect with you and pray with you and um, give you some more information. So bless you, have a wonderful day and we can't wait to see you again next week. See you later.